Hi, my name is Paige Garwood, and we're getting ready to do the very first uh, portion of our Circle of Fifths lessons. We're going to learn to draw the Circle of Fifths today. In every skill that you master, no matter whether it's music or anything in life, there are going to be some things that you just have to do. The Circle of Fifths is one of the things that I believe you have to do. But it's not hard. It, there's some very simple concepts, very simple memory aids I'm going to help you with. If you can remember that uh, fat cats go down alleys eating biscuits, if you can remember the boys eat all the greasy cheese fries, you're almost all the way there. If you can remember how to draw a circle, and if you can remember how to put lines around the edge of a circle so it looks like a clock face, that's really all you need to do. Can you count to six? I think you can. You're fairly bright. So those little things are all we need to do to get this thing going. So, without any further ado, I'm going to sign off. We're going to bring up a bunch of diagrams from the, uh, from the PowerPoint slide that I did, and I'm going to walk you through drawing the circle of fifths. Have a good time. See you in a bit. Bye-bye. All right, let's get started with this. Let's uh, take a look at our very first part of learning how to draw the circle of fifths. We're going to start with, hey, a circle. Can you do that? All right, let's give that a shot. All right, now we got our circle drawn. One of the very few basic shapes you learn in kindergarten, first grade, or in my case, maybe fifth grade. Now, once you get the circle drawn, you want to put the crosshairs in there, like you'd see in a sniper scope, or if you're a hunter, like you'd see in your hunter scope. And that's going to give you lines at 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. And once that happens, put the rest of the face of the dial in. Two lines in between each of the pairs you just drew. That gives you every point on the clock from 12 o'clock, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and back to 12 again. All right, now once you've done that, we want you to put uh, across the top right corner to the right of the circle the, these letters F, C, G, D, A, E, B. Now, who can remember those? But if you remember that fat cats go down alleys eating biscuits, then you are way, way, way ahead of the game. All you gotta remember is fat cats go down alleys eating biscuits. Write those letters. Now I put up there the order of sharks. I don't care whether you put that up there or not right now. It's not important. You just need to remember that fat cats go down alleys eating biscuits. All right? All right, do it. All right, now we're going to get to the next part where we put in letters around the outside of the circle. What do these letters stand for? Ah, we'll cover that later. Right now, let's just start with the letter C at the top of the circle. That's one thing you have to remember, the letter C at the top of the circle. Now, look in the letters that we just wrote, F, C, G, D, A, E, B, and you will find the letter C. All right, you see that? Excellent. Now, what is the next letter after the letter C? G. So that's the next letter that goes to the right of C, as you see in the diagram here. What's the next letter after G you're going to see? You're going to see the letter D. So put D in the line that follows G. It's at the 2 o'clock position on our clock. What's the letter that comes after D? Okay, we'll look up there. F, C, G, D, A. Wow, oh, excellent. Okay, we'll put an A uh, at the 3 o'clock position. You see how we're doing this? See how it works? All right, good. It's good to know that fat cats go down alleys eating biscuits because after fat cats go down alleys, what do they do? Well, they're eating, of course, and that's the letter E, and that's our next letter. So fat cats go down alleys eating biscuits. C, G, D, A, E. What comes after E? Well, on our chart, it's going to be the letter B. So that is going to be our next letter we put in there. Fat cats go down alleys eating biscuits. Starting at the top with C at the center, C, G, D, A, E, B. What's the last letter that comes after B? Okay, well, go all the way back around to the beginning to F. And that's our letter at the 6 o'clock. Notice I put a sharp next to it. That's one of the things you have to remember. I don't have a snappy little saying to help you remember that. Just know that it's an F sharp at the 6 o'clock position. All right, good. Now, let's fill in the numbers inside the circle. At C at the top, you're going to put a zero, and then you're going to number the rest of the spots just like you would a clock face. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, we done? Fantastic. What we've done is we have put letters and numbers on the right-hand side of the circle. These are all the keys 
that have sharps in their key signature. Now we'll get into more on that later down the road. Just know that the circle is split right down the middle. The letters from the 12 o'clock position to the 6 o'clock position are all the keys that have sharps in them. And we'll explain that here in a bit. Well, now we're getting ready to go to the left side of the circle where we are going to put all the letters around the outside of the circle and numbers on the inside of the circle that will give us all the keys that have flats in them. So let's get started with that. All right, well, just like we handled the right-hand side of the circle first with some letters in the upper right-hand corner, we're gonna to go to the upper left-hand corner of the left side of this diagram, and you'll notice some letters there, B, E, A, D, G, C, F. Those letters are exactly opposite from the letters you saw on the right-hand side, F, C, G, D, A, E, B. So instead of having fat cats going down alleys eating biscuits, we now have boys eating all the greasy cheese fries. I tried to find some pictures of boys eating cheese fries. It just got pretty disgusting. Just know that boys eat all the greasy cheese fries. B E A D G C F. That little string of letters is going to give our clue for us to finish out this diagram on the left hand side. All right, let's go. All right, you notice there's a C at the top of the circle. We've already dealt with that. Well, let's find the letter C in our letters to the upper left hand corner of this diagram. B E A D G C. What's the very next letter after C? It's the letter F. So guess which letter goes in the first empty slot to the left or counterclockwise from C. That's right, it's gonna be F. All right, now, what is the letter after F in the string of letters to the left? Well, F is at the end of this list, so to get to the next letter, you have to go all the way back to the beginning. That letter is going to be B. Well, guess which letter goes after F, going counterclockwise, B. Now, for your information, that all the rest of the letters down to the bottom of the circle are gonna have a flat symbol in front of them. F is one of the keys that has flats in it, but you don't say F flat, you just say F. But every other letter that's gonna come along that we're gonna put in the outside of the circle will have a flat symbol after it. So the next letter after F is B flat. Okay, very good. All right, what's the letter that follows B in that list of letters in the upper left-hand corner? Well, it's the letter B. So, the next line after B flat is going to be E flat. Remember, put a flat after the letter. Very good. After E flat, what's the letter? A. All right, so A is what happens on the next slot of the circle, around the circle of fifths. Put a flat in front of it, it becomes A flat. This isn't hard. Now, the next letter after A in the diagram is D in that little string of letters, B-E-A-D. Well, put a flat next to that D, and that goes in the very next spot. Now, the next letter we're gonna find after D is a letter G. Where's it gonna go? Well, it shares the bottom of the circle of fifths with F sharp. So it has G flat sitting next to the F sharp. Very good. Now, we got all our letters in. The next step is to put the numbers in. Notice how we went clockwise, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we're going to continue going clockwise, but now we're going to count backwards. Five, four, three, two, one. So now, this is your circle of fifths. you finished drawing it. All right, best thing for you to do is get a piece of paper and practice doing it. I can't emphasize strongly enough how important it is that you get this picture in your head. Now, watch carefully as a circle of fifths happens to grow right before your eyes. Thank you.